Welcome, folks, to another Game Hoarder production. I'm proud to present to you another Tex Murphy adventure. Brought to you by Access Software Incorporated. Wait a minute, I thought Tex died in the last game. He died in my game. Let's see what happened. Joe Estevez, Clit Howard, Roger Davis. Story designed by Chris Jones, Aaron Connors. Our design, Nathan Arsinian. Lead artist, BJ. Is your daddy dead? This guy's been taking the bath salts. Are you okay? Sit up for a minute in the camera. Okay, I guess that was the intro. We'll do the gamer level again. The fuck? No. Oh, come on, sweetie. Let me see that handsome face of yours. I'm not wearing it. I think it's in the laundry. Quit stalling. I want to see the real you. Okay, okay. Hope you got your smelling salts handy. <laughs> Ooh, scary. You know, my brother had a mask just like that that he wore to all the Halloween parties. He always won a prize. Yeah? Well, after a hot bath, an apricot facial, and a little makeup, you're gonna be eating your heart out there, darling. You probably forgot, but our date starts in exactly 12 minutes. Lucky for you, there is a one-hour grace period.
I'm sorry, Chelsea, but I've been working like a dog. Oh, has it been a hard day's night? Yeah, and then some. I just ended a 36-hour stakeout. Outside a steakhouse, ironically enough. <laughs> well, I hope it didn't ruin your appetite, because I have a little surprise for you. Looking for the nookie. I hope it's a naughty surprise. Oh, well, you'll just have to wait and see, cowboy. Now don't go back to sleep. Make yourself beautiful as quick as you can and zip on over here. I'll be waiting. Uh, sorry I'm late. Well, at least you're here. Come on in, let me take your hat and your coat. You know, in this light, you kind of look like a princess. Well, thank you. So which one of the dwarves do I have with me tonight? Happy, grumpy, or dopey? <sighs> Sleepy, actually. But hey, I'll tell you what. I put on a fresh shirt. I'm wearing the tie you asked me to wear. Get a couple of drinks for me. I'm going to perk right up, OK? Well, you look like you've been working hard. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. It's just that I can't seem to get a decent night's sleep. You still having those nightmares? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I think if you kept a little bit more normal hours and you ate a decent meal every now and again, you might look and feel a lot better. And that's why we have an eight o'clock reservation at the Golden Pagoda. Well, <clears throat> since you got to pick the restaurant, Maybe I could be in charge of the uh, early evening entertainment. Uh, because if we... Tex, honey, listen. I, I don't want you to think that I'm not interested. I am. If it's just that I think that we have some things that we really need to discuss first. Such as? I just think it would be nice if our relationship could go further. What, like uh, all the way to second base? Oh. No. All I'm talking about is the ability to commit to something that has the potential to, to make us both very happy. It's about Sylvia, isn't it? No, and it's not about marriage. It's, it's about that one thing that, that prevents us from being close. What does Sylvia have to do with you and me? You tell me. Okay, if you really want to know, I'll tell you. Keep in mind, six years ago, I was pretty much an idiot. The colonel had just fired me from his detective agency because I thought everything had to be done by the book. Literally. Well, being the naive optimist that I was, I decided to go into business for myself and become a big success. As it turned out, I was about to learn some even harder lessons. There I was in my shiny new office with all the trimmings up to my ears in debt. Weeks had gone by and I was still waiting around for my first client to show up. I figured I'd have more work than I could handle in a big city like New San Francisco. And I was just starting to feel like a tiny bug on a windshield. Yeah, Chelsea, you wouldn't believe it, but I had a really nice office. Let me tell you about it. Error code does not indicate an error. Okay. Doesn't move nearly as crazy, that's for sure. I just got this phone. And it came with a free two-week subscription to the American Information Database. I can request data on my cases, and it will be faxed to my office immediately. Welcome to the American Information Database. We hope you enjoy your free two-week trial subscription. 
Our new voice recognition interface makes requesting information more convenient than ever before. Simply tell us the topic you want researched. The request will be immediately transmitted to our central database. Any available information will be sent, usually within seconds, to your fax number. What topic would you like us to research? Hmm. A search for information on Tex Murphy has been initiated. What other topic would you like us to research? Thank you for using the American Information Database. Goodbye. Error code does not indicate an error. Do you have a fax? Inter interface is a lot different than the first two games. March 4, 2004. Graduated University of Est Investigation of Utah. Received private investigator's license 2032. Worked for Dobbs Investigative Services. 2033 to 36. Received personal business in 2037. Signed one year lease at the business complex 813 Full Street, New San Fran. Getting used to my keys here. The PI rules is my Bible. 20 tried and true aphorisms with plenty of blank pages to add your own. I've come up with 17 others so far. I use this tape to measure my success. I've just got to dust it off and it'll work like a charm. These desk drawers are special because they're mine. The rich cherry wood finish of my new desk presents an image of stability and success to my clients. Well, I had a candy bar wrapper in here, but it looked messy, so I threw it out. Extreme Sports Illustrated is pretty cutting edge. The last issue had an article on ultimate chess. 30 men and two women in a literal fight to the death. <laughs> this here is my little buddy. <laughs> a toy mouse? The Murphy family dance steps and the secret of successful dance instructors will be kept here. In case I ever have to make a career change. Oh, Boyd's Life. Annual fishing issue. I wonder what those twins are up to this month. Oh, there we go. Shift key. I fill my ashtray with candy in hopes that visitors will forego the dangers of smoking in favor of good, wholesome, processed sugar. Well, I've only got a few things in my file cabinets right now. But someday, 
they'll be jam-packed. This perpetual motion device just goes on and on and on. Reminds me of my crazy Uncle Cadmus. Well, I've only got a few things in my file cabinets right now, but someday, they'll be jam-packed. Murphy, I thought I'd write this note to wish you well in your new venture. Also, you might think I still hate your guts for that little stunt you pulled on me with the ethics board. As it turns out, a few of my friends at the ISFPD, among others, were able to help me clear things up and get my PI license reinstated. So, other than the character smearing in public humiliation, everything's worked out fine. And I do still hate your guts, you ungrateful two-faced little turd. I put a lot of trust in you, took you under my wing, showed you the ropes of business, and for what? A knife in the back? A word of advice. Someday you're going to learn that not everything is black and white. Sometimes you have to bend the rules a little to make them work right. And even more important, never betray your friends. That kind of thing comes back to haunt you. So again, good luck running your own agency. If anyone ever needed it, it's you. And don't expect me to send any business your way. I don't like seeing people waste their money. The Corno. Mutant fish catch them before they catch you. The Colonel told me this book was for idiots, but I found these words of wisdom to be both inspiring and instructive. The only pet I've ever had. His name is Raymond. Raymond! That is a fourth of the size of my penis. Just thought everyone should know that. Ah, nothing refreshes like cool, clear water. This is the door to my walk-in closet and bedroom. Some par cheesy. Well, five would be nice here. Here we go. Let the adventure begin. Are you the private investigator? Hello! I'm not so painted on the door. I'll take that as a yes. I'd like to hire you, if you're available. Chelsea's gonna love this. Well, it just so happens that I am. What can I do for you, Ms. Linsky. But I'd prefer if you called me Sylvia. Okay, Sylvia. I'm Tex Murphy. Have a seat. I'm sorry if I disturbed your game. Well, that's all right. I was losing anyway. Would you like one? No, actually, there's a rumor going around that uh, those things are bad for you. Sure. Smoke if you got them. Lots of things are bad for you. That doesn't stop me from enjoying them. So, uh, why are you in the market for a PI? 
My father, Carl Lenski, died a week ago. I'm sorry to hear that. The police think it's suicide. I believe they're wrong. Well, the police are usually pretty good in matters like this. I mean, I can't believe they'd make that big a mistake. My father wasn't suicidal, and I'll pay you to prove it. Okay, um... Your father's name is... Sorry, what? Carl Linsky. Okay. Well, if we rule out the suicide, that leaves three other ways to go. I mean, it could have been an accident or uh, natural causes, or it could have been murder. The police say that they have witnesses that saw him jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, I guess that rules out the first two then. So you think your father was murdered? He didn't kill himself, I know it. Look, if I take your case, you gotta understand there's no money back guarantee. And it doesn't sound real promising. I just don't know what else to do. Who's the officer in charge? The detective's name is Eve Clements. All right, I'll, I'll go down and I'll talk to her. We can get together later and I'll tell you what I found out. I'm staying at my father's house. Here's the address. <laughs> of course. What other way to now, present yourself if you're a female with tits? How much do you need? Because I haven't got a lot. I'm running a special this week. If I decide not to take your case, there isn't going to be any charge. Mm. Thank you. I'll be waiting. <clears throat> it was nice to meet you, Sylvia. Error code does not indicate an error. <laughs> I don't know what that is, folks. I guess we're just, just going to have to deal with it for now. I guess maybe I should break out my uh, my box copy. My office having only a single exit is just one of the several fire code violations that made this place extremely reasonable. Let's go to Eve Clemens of the police station. Go! It doesn't sound like a very promising start. Well, like I said, I was running out of cash fast and was pretty desperate for a case. I knew Detective Clementson figured I'd pay her a visit. The only problem was she and the Colonel were pretty tight, and like I told you, I'd gotten the Colonel in some trouble not long before. Get out! You busy? If it isn't Tex Murphy. Damn, waiting for a flood there, Eve? Sold out any fellow PIs lately? Oh, you bet. Three this week alone. You know, the last thing I need is some pansy PI wasting my time. Look, I'll be so quick, you won't even know I was here. Give me one good reason why I should do any favors for you. Okay. Because you're a good Christian woman and you live by the golden rule. All right, Murphy. You're just lucky you caught me in a charitable mood. But be quick about it. Let's ask about Karolinski. 
Six witnesses saw Linsky take the dive. Their stories matched up and they all checked out. And they all ID'd Linsky? Not exactly. None of them were close enough to make an absolutely positive ID, but they described his general appearance, build, and clothing. Body wasn't found for a couple of days. Wasn't in the best shape when we fished it out of the bay. But we were able to make an identification using the personal effects found on the body. Linsky's autopsy? Coroner said the cause of death was drowning. No other injuries. Though there was a scar back here. Linsky probably had surgery done recently. That's all. <coughs> he didn't follow it up since it had nothing to do with his suicide. Mm hmm. Good police work. What about personal effects? Standard stuff. Wallet, keys, and a suicide note neatly sealed in a Ziploc bag. What about this note? I'd let you see it, but it's logged in as evidence. The handwriting, incidentally, was a hundred percent match. Doesn't mean someone didn't make him write it. What about you, Detective Eve? I'm willing to help you out because you're just getting started in the business. But don't abuse the privilege. What do you know about this Sylvia Linsky? As next of kin, she was notified and came in to identify her father's body. Didn't take it too well. One of the uniforms had to drive her home. And tell me that I'm not the sexiest beast you've ever seen. The Colonel seems to think you've got the potential to be a good P.I. Once you wake up to reality and get your priorities straight. Turn the fucking page. Guess that's it for here. Let's go off to Karolinski's home. Go! So you're saying you're not going to take my case? Well, I don't want to take your money if I can't help you. Fine. Leave. I'm just being straight up, okay? If you won't help me, I can do what I can on my own. It certainly won't be the first time. Pretty sure she's wearing a wig. I charge $400 a day plus expenses. I have $1,000. If you can prove it wasn't suicide, I'll give you $10,000 later. It's a deal. Now you're going to need to tell me everything you know so I can get started. Oh, I will. Thank you, Tex. Why don't you think your father would commit suicide? He never would have considered it. He took good care of himself, and he often told me he was going to celebrate his 100th birthday by going skydiving. Well, do you know anybody who'd want to see him dead? No. No one. Everyone liked him. He was a kind man. What's up with his suicide note, then? I know the police confirmed that the note was in my father's handwriting, but it doesn't matter. I know it had to be a forgery. My father mentioned that he had had surgery performed, but... He said it was minor and didn't say any more about it. Detective Clement said you didn't pick up your father's personal effects. I really don't remember much after they asked me to identify the body. An officer drove me home and I haven't gone back. Well, they won't release the personal effects to me, and I'm hoping I'll be able to go through them so I can see if there's any kind of lead. When we're done, I'll go pick them up and meet you back here. She wasn't very friendly or helpful. I think she already made up her mind about my father's death. All I want to do is find out the truth about my father's death. 
I found a scrap of paper here with the address to your office written on it, no name. If my father didn't contact you, he must have gone to see someone else who works in your building. Before I came to see you, I checked the directory in the lobby, but didn't recognize any of the names. After I finished talking to Sylvia, she gave me a spare key and said I was free to look around the house. Oh, Sylvia was playing you like a kazoo. Well, more like a game of trouble. As I began to realize when I started poking around Linsky's house. Error code does not indicate an error. All right, let's check out this dude's house. No, I don't want to want to save again. There we go. Linsky's house. Really? There's some little faggot skateboarding outside of my house at 11 p.m.? Better take your ass home, boy, before I break your ass open. Alright, so what we have to do for this puzzle is we have to get the numbers to equal 25 in all directions. light is flashing by the four, the nine, and the eight. These three numbers are probably useful. The four, the nine, and the eight. Let's check out the kitchen. There's always time for a new case. I wonder if this was for Linsky's personal use. If so, he may have had a little addiction. He liked that Heron. All this detective work's given me the munchies. Maybe I can dig up a little snack in the fridge. Whoa! Got some bananas. This must lead to the bedroom. What have we here? Hmm. It appears Carl Linsky was about to dump someone named Dolores. Dear Dolores, I decided that it's maybe best we don't see each other anymore with everything else that's going on in my life right now. I don't think I have much time or energy to maintain. But I want to go sky skydiving when I'm fucking 100, so that's kind of uh, an oxymoron. Hmm. Brand new cotton briefs. Larges, too. I wonder if I ought to... Nah. Hey, if they're new, why not?
Oh, it's the good old... Don't... I think I like the free roam better. Just using the keyboard and arrows. It's good for mouse control. Now I have no clue how I got rid of it. Oh, close. Fuck it. Junk mail, catalog. So Linsky signed a book deal and wasn't delivering the goods. The question is, why? Cash advance of 22000 You fucked up, son. All right, folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Tex Murphy soon to come. Thanks for watching.